It to be slightly juicier. And that's characteristic of this fig. The skin is a little more delicate. Same color as Ron de Bordeaux. Same, essentially same size. And I don't think that the flavor is as good, nor do I think it is as an abundant producer, personally, uh, as Ron de Bordeaux. Uh, but it does pretty well for itself. It's too early. It's only been a couple of years to really judge it conclusively. I don't like judging figs conclusively in a year or two. It takes three years, four years is even better. Certainly three is a minimum to really make judgment on a fig variety. There's so many things to consider, so many variables, so many factors. Does it crack? Does it split? Is it well adapted in the climatic zone that you live in? Is it cold hardy? Is it this? Is it that? You know, how does it compare in taste? How does it compare in size? Let me taste this one. Yeah, you know, it, it's a good fig. Um, I wouldn't have it in my collection if it wasn't, because I discard so many. But this is not, in my opinion, as tasty as Rondi Bordeaux. And in a lot of other ways, I, I would say that Rondi Bordeaux is superior for an early fig. Uh, for any kind of fig, Rondi Bordeaux is superior to this. Yeah, it's very good. I could eat these all day, but it's lacking that extra exquisite quality of perfection that you can find in a Smith or in a Rondi Bordeaux. And other than that, uh, it, it it's a very interesting variety. Now, I'm going to, so that you know, I'm going to cut this down all the way down to here in the fall and let this start to grow more branches and I'm going to start to scaffold it more properly. I've got a tide which I talked to you about before. I like to train my trees and here's another one that's ripe really. There we go. Nice. I value this tree because of its earliness. Early, early, early. If I've stressed anything, it's earliness in the Northeast. Hey, hey there. I know, I'm sorry. She wanted a cut of that. <laughs> she wanted a piece of that fig. What are some, there's some Rondi Bordeaux that are ripe. Let's give her a piece of that. All right, with that, I hope you enjoyed the visit. Maybe I'll show you this huge, gigantic persimmons tree. It's a meter tree. When I bought it over 20 years ago, well over 20 years ago, it was advertised that it was self-fertile, and to a very, very small degree it is. But I've said this in other videos with regards to my persimmons collection, don't believe it. Have a male pollinator for American persimmons, any, any of the, of the uh, modified American persimmons, whatever they are, whether they're Yates, and let's take a look at a Yates. We'll walk over. This is an American modified persimmons, fully American, but modified by human selection, which I've talked about before in one video. And you can see that it is an abundant producer. There's lots and lots and lots of persimmons on this tree. It's just simply loaded with fruit, as you can tell. It's not a real old tree. This branch here is gonna break from its own weight, and I'm gonna support it very soon. I supported this one, and this is what I was telling you about tying. You need to tie sometimes. You need to be interactive. You need to do that. Uh, look at all those fruits. I don't wanna lose the fruits. They're easy, they're within reach, easy to harvest. They're very good. Yates is a very, very, very good modified American variety. We can call it a variety, but it is an American persimmons, essentially. But, you know, the hand-selected over many decades, humanly selected, modified American varieties are larger, 
than what you would find natively in the woods and less seeds and they taste a little better many of them like early golden they taste a little better than what you'd find while strolling through a wooded area and finding an indigenous American persimmons tree just growing there in the wild. Yates, Yates is a wonderful, look at all those fruits. Look at it, look at all the fruit on this tree. And it's, it's a beautiful tree. But I've got a lot of beautiful trees. There's another persimmons, very, very large persimmons. Here's another variety here. I'm not going to go into any more detail on these. This video is already long enough. But for use for anybody who's hanging on that likes persimmons, look at look at this variety. There's a lot of them. It's a beautiful tree. And we'll just slip through here. I know that you might be interested, some of you out there in well, Paul Paul. And these trees are quite old. If you're interested, I made more detailed videos of these trees before. You can find them. And there's a lot of Paul Paul. A lot of fruit on these trees. These are very large trees for Paul Paul and well, well over 20 years old. And pawpaw is a very slow growing tree, usually. It's an indigenous fruit of America, the largest indigenous fruit of America. There's my hand. And these aren't fully grown yet. I grafted about five different varieties on my pawpaw trees. I don't even have a, I have a record, but I don't remember all hand what the varieties are. Some of them are large and some of them are smaller. Some of them are more exquisite in taste. But I did it all for the purpose of pollination because this is not a self-fertile tree. You need to have pollinators. And it just produces an abundance of fruit. Like, that's all I can really say about it. And they're very delicious. I've talked about it, again, in other videos. Uh, some varieties aren't as tasty as others. But I was able to get some of the tastiest from a friend and I grafted them successfully on the tree and I'm very, very happy. It's a big producer for me of lots and lots of fruit, which they get ripe in about in September. So in another month, these will be ripening for sure on the tree. Okay, so I guess I've worn this video out with time. Thank you very much for visiting. And I've got to feed my little doggy a, a fig now because I neglected her. It's a lovely day and I'm enjoying myself here in the yard. I thought I'd make this video and say hi. Thanks out there to all my viewers and thank you for all of you out there that have subscribed to my channel. It's an honor and a pleasure to make these videos and to share my world with you and the knowledge that I have. And remember, always be a skeptic, no matter who it is. I'm, my, I'm probably the worst skeptic of myself that it could possibly be. Everybody makes mistakes, nobody's perfect. I hear a lot of false information out there on YouTube. And, you know, hey, I don't agree with a lot of it. And I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that don't agree with everything I say. But I try to back up what I say. I try to show, you know, by example, what I usually talk about. You know, and I try to reserve my opinions until I'm relatively certain uh, of what my final conclusion is about something, one subject matter or another. Uh, I do my best, but I certainly make mistakes. Forgive me my mistakes, as I forgive others their mistakes. We're human beings. There is no perfection in being human. There is no perfection that I have seen anywhere in the universe. There just is no perfection. If we can accept that, 
well, we can be a lot more flexible about how we feel about each other and ourselves even. More forgiving, more compassionate, more tolerant. And so I hope you've enjoyed my video today. Good day.